What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another brand new Pokemon Sword and Shield Crown Tundra VGC video. Today, Picolytics has been updated with the latest usage stats on the Series 7 ladder, so I thought it'd be a really interesting time if I could make a video where I explain each Pokemon that is high usage and why it's so good in the format and exactly what they're doing at the moment. So yeah, if you guys are excited for this video, and if you learn anything new, do me a favor, leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications, because I'll, I'll be bringing you guys some daily Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC content. I fumbled on my words there a little bit. And also, for those of you who want to see a new battle from me, you can actually do me a favor right now. Go over to this channel, Nino Poke Bros, and check out the best of three I did versus my pal Zordor on their channel. Uh, he actually ended up commentating the battle, which is really cool, so that will be linked in the description down below. But yeah, with that, let's go ahead and get into it. So as you can see, Tapu Fini is number one in usage, and that's no surprise to me. Tapu Fini is arguably the best Pokemon in the format, and a lot of people, when they hear like, oh, this is the best Pokemon in the format, they assume that this Pokemon is picking up KOs. That isn't necessarily the case with Tapu Fini. It's actually more of a supported Pokemon that does have potential to pick up KOs occasionally, but as you can see, it's more of a bulky Pokemon with 70 HP, 75 attack, 115 defense, 95 special attack, 130 special defense, and 85 speed. This is a really interesting Pokemon. It's able to set up Misty Terrain, which actually blocks status moves from hitting any grounded Pokemon. So if you're a Land or Astherian uh, in Misty Terrain, you won't be protected at all. However, if you are a Metagross, you will be protected. So that thing can't be burnt, can't be paralyzed. It's a really useful Pokemon to have on the field. On top of that, it actually prevents Regidraco from running wild in the format, since uh, Misty Surge cuts the power of Dragon moves on all grounded Pokemon. And Tapu Fini is just overall a great Pokemon with a lot of tools at its disposal. If we actually take a look at what it learns, Tapu Fini... Oh, what am I doing? <laughs> okay, Tapu Fini uh, has a lot of really cool tools. It has access to Icy Wind, Nature's Madness, Muddy Water, a really annoying move, Calm Mind, as well as many other very important moves. As you can see, uh, it also gets access to Haze, Hydro Pump, Ice Beam, Moonblast. It got Play Rough this generation, which is... Uh, I hate that. They didn't give it to Coco or Bulu, which is really annoying. Scald is a really good move uh, if you're not running terrain for some reason. It also gets Heal Pulse, I believe, as well as Taunt and a bunch of other really nice options. So yeah, it's, it's a phenomenal Pokemon, and it has great usage next to things like right here. You can see it. Incineroar, Metagross, Landorus, Kartana, Galarian Moltres, Glacier, Tornadus. It works well on essentially every single team. If you're not actively using like a dragon type as your main offensive Pokemon, there is literally no reason not to run Finny as your water type because you get so much out of it. It's able to like deal out damage and counter things like Dragapult, Regidraco, Galarian Moltres, Zapdos. A lot of things in the format do not want to have to deal with Tapu Finny's uh, Stab Moonblast or even a Stab Muddy Water. Either one of those aren't great for Pokemon, and it's also phenomenal at just eating up hits because of its bulk. So Tapu Fini at number one absolutely makes sense. I think it's a phenomenal Pokemon. Next up is Metagross, which this is an unpopular opinion among some of the newer players. Uh, but I, I will say, as, as someone who has played this game for a while, Metagross at 27% usage as like the premier weakness policy user, I'm okay with it. it it's cool. Like it, it has its counters. It only really functions super threateningly under Tailwind, and there are plenty of ways of KOing it, even when Dynamaxed. Uh, you can Calc to live the hits, screens are a really great tool for it, and things like Kartana can eat up a couple of hits from it, especially if they Dynamax. So, I don't think Metagross is too difficult to beat. Uh, as you can see, they tend to run things like Protect, Iron Head, Ice Punch, uh, Earthquake, and I've seen a couple with Hammer Arm. Basically, this thing is really bulky. It has access to uh, it has access to clear body, which means you can't intimidate it, and also can't lower any of its other stats. So typically what people do is run a semi-bulky Metagross uh, with a little bit of speed to allow it to outspeed things under Tailwind. Just Dynamax it, go for a Bulldoze, lowering everything's speed except for the Metagross, as well as activating its weakness policy, and then just Dynamax and try to get some KOs from there. But I think it has plenty of checks in the format. Incineroar can eat a hit from it, especially if it isn't carrying Max Quake. Landers Therian can Max Quake it back to KO. Uh, Galarian Moltres is able to eat a hit because how bulky it is, and also KO it back with a special dark move. Uh, Dragapult, special Dragapult is another great Pokemon because it's able to hit it with Stab, Max Phantasm on the special side and is naturally faster. Also, we have things like Tapu Fini that will sometimes run Haze, uh, and yeah, like there are just a ton of different options you have for it. It's a good Pokemon, like it's, it's a great Pokemon, but it's not as dominating as Pokemon have been in the past. So yeah, I think, I think it's really solid at, you know, 27% usage. As you can see, like the top four Pokemon, they work so well together that you can understand why like they have 30 percent usage, 27% usage, 26% usage, and 26% usage. Like, it makes sense. It's not too bad, though. Um, 
And I think that this format provides a lot of variety similar to VGC 2018, how you still had like D like these dominating Pokemon. Metagross wasn't as dominating, but you had like Tapu Fini, Landorus, and Cinnaroar at the top of the usage stats. And that was just because of how reliable they were. They weren't exactly like super offensive monsters that would KO everything on your field. Like it wasn't just a hyper offense thing. It was just a reliability thing. So I like that a lot. Uh, Metagross is more just a very reliable steel type that is really solid in the format. Next up, we have Landorus Therian, and a lot of people are like, oh man, I'm so scared of Landorus Therian. <laughs> it's going to be number one in usage. It's going to skyrocket to 50% usage, 60% usage. Guys, if you said that, you had no idea what you were talking about. Uh, Landorus Therian at 26% usage, that's kind of low in my opinion. I figured it'd be at least 30, and I can understand why it's not as popular anymore. It gets hard checked by Tapu Fini, it gets hard checked by Glacier, uh, was it? Zapdos is now something that it has to fear a max airstream from. Galarian Articuno is another Pokemon that it does not want to have to uh, intimidate since it gets outsped and KO'd by max airstream or max mindstorm. Either one of those, like it just messes it up. But this Pokemon is pretty healthy in the format, in my opinion. It is really high usage, and that's just because it's probably one of the best ground types in the game, as well as a great Pokemon with access to a lot of tools like U-Turn, Rock Slide, Earthquake, and now it can use Max Airstream if it Dynamaxes. And it typically, like, while yes, you can run Life Orb and Max Airstream with this thing, it isn't actually as offensive of a Pokemon as it has been in previous formats. The Intimidate is so useful in the format that you're able to just cycle it in and out with U-Turn uh, and such. And yeah, it's it's just a good Pokemon. It's it's a really reliable Pokemon. Uh, it gets checked by a lot of things, though. Glacier KOs it. Kartana can literally just sit in front of it and not have to worry about anything except for superpower. And if Kartana Dynamax is in front of it, it can just throw off a, a max overgrowth and KO it. So yeah, uh, it's, it's a really interesting Pokemon of the format. Not nearly as dominating as it has been in previous formats, even though it wasn't exactly like a super offensive threat. This thing could be offensive, but I think a lot more Pokemon are running it, or a lot more teams are running it for the uh, utility of having a reliable earthquake, having the Intimidate, having the U-Turn. A lot of it is just how well it works on teams in, in terms of synergy. So yeah, I mean, like it has plenty of checks, so. Next up is Incineroar, and I honestly didn't expect Incineroar to be this high in usage, considering uh, we have such amazing tools that just counter it now, but I guess you can't really kill the cat. It's It's got nine lives, and it's able to function well in essentially any format, just because it's such a Swiss army knife of tools. Uh, once again, some people were like, oh no, Incineroar, 90% usage. No, that, that's not how it works. <laughs> um, Incineroar is a really good Pokemon. It has access to Fake Out, Intimidate, Parting Shot, Snarl, Will-O-Wisp, Burning Jealousy, all these amazing tools that make it really useful on a team. But it's never been a super dominating Pokemon, except maybe in 2019 and a bit in 2018. Uh, mostly in 2019, it was because it was one of the best ways to get a Xerneas off the field with a Roar. Um, and also in 2018, just because it was a new toy and a lot of people really enjoyed being able to U-turn out, fake out, uh, Will-O-Wisp, Parting Shot, not Parting Shot, it didn't get Parting Shot back then, but Snarl, a lot of things were really good about it in 2018. In this format, it's mostly just a snarling machine in my opinion. Uh, it's, it's a lot like Landorus, except it doesn't pick up KOs and anything except for Kartana occasionally if it doesn't get KO'd by Max Knuckle. Um, and it's, it's really just there for utility more than anything. Uh, it's a great fire type, helps you beat the steel types, uh, a nice way of switching, uh, switching in on Glacier if you try to predict an ice move. What you can do is switch in, intimidate, parting shot out, get it to minus two. Uh, and on their fighting move you can switch into a ghost type, or on their Gron move you can switch into a flying type. Either one, whichever one feels safer. It's just a nice tool on the team that really sort of holds the team together. It's like a glue to a team, and it really makes the team function extremely well. So yeah, uh, Incineroar, I like it. Reggie Alecki. Now, I was one of the people who talked down about this Pokemon initially. I was like, I don't think it's going to be good. A lot of people have proven me wrong. And I actually got a comment the other day that was like, I keep seeing these videos where Regieleki is like in the title. It's like Regieleki is the, one of the greatest Pokemon ever. And then it just sits there doing nothing but spamming Electroweb and then dies. Yes. Yes. That's what it does. It is the best Electroweber I've seen in a long time. 200 base speed is so much higher than anything else that's relevant in the format that it's able to literally slow down anything. Like, I, I was running Thievil on my team, and the fact that I couldn't one-shot that thing meant that Thievil's speed boost started to go away, and then it's like usefulness started to go away. Uh, Scarf Pokemon can't outspeed it sometimes, and they still get their speed reduced. The fact that this thing is able to outspeed everything in the format, lowering its speed, and then allow its partner to attack, with a massively powerful move where they wouldn't have outsped in the first place is so important. It's important to beating things like Kartana, it's important to beating things uh, like Tornadus, it's important to beating things like, well not Dragapult in this format, but 
Like, there are so many Pokemon that you don't want to be outsped by, and the fact that you can run this thing next to Tapu Fini so reliably, because they just cover each other so well, Tapu Fini dealing with Landorus and just other things that it doesn't want to have to deal with, it, it's so good. It's such a reliable combo that I, I completely understand why this thing is hitting nearly 20% usage. And the fact is, it's not busted either. Like, you can deal with this thing. It's annoying to deal with, you have to target it down, and then play the rest of the game, like, with it off the field, because if you let this thing live, you're going to be slow for the rest of the game. Granted, it has a horrible matchup versus Trick Room teams just because of how like frail and fast it is. Under Trick Room, it's it's so useless. But the fact that it's able to run support moves like Light Screen, Reflect, Electroweb, and occasionally Screech, it's just a really fun Pokemon. As you can see, like the top Pokemon, barring Tapu Fini and Metagross, like these top three are all utility Pokemon at heart. And Tapu Fini in itself could be a utility Pokemon at heart, but it, it can go offensive. Um, but yeah, like that that's just so scary. Honestly, the Pokemon I have a problem with a little bit is Glacier. 17% usage, not terrible, not terrible. There are a couple of ways of beating it. However, if you look at the stats, that's absolutely insane. I made a moveset guide on it a couple of days ago. You should check it out. But 100 HP, 145 attack, 130 defense, 65 special attack, and 110 special defense with 30 speed. First of all, giving this thing 100 HP and 130 defense was already ridiculous, especially with the 110 special defense. But the fact that this thing can Dynamax makes it a lot scarier. And the coverage is what really breaks this Pokemon. It's such a reliable Pokemon under Trick Room. It speed ties with things like Amoongus, Snorlax, etc. It's only really getting undersped by like Torkoal, uh, Stack Attacka, and um, not Amoongus, but... Um, Dusclops. And those Pokemon, they do have tools to help deal with it. Like, you can sleep this thing uh, with an Amoongus if you decide to, if you like somehow underspeed it. You can Will this thing with a Dusclops if you underspeed it. And you can just Burning Jealousy this thing with like Torkoal, I guess. But the fact of the matter is, like, this Pokemon is so easy to slap onto a Trick Room team. You're able to Dynamax, give this thing a weakness policy. I personally run Assault Vest on my current team, but that's just because the weakness policy fits better on. Stack Attacka, but the fact that this thing can reliably use weakness policy, as well as getting good coverage moves like high horsepower, close combat, heavy slam, smart strike. I personally prefer smart strike. I don't think you should ever run heavy slam on this thing, and that's just because when the fairy type dynamaxes, you're in trouble. Just run smart strike, because <laughs> if heavy slam doesn't hit dynamax Pokemon, that's the main issue. Uh, but the fact that it's able to run these coverage moves that boost its defense, special defense, and attack respectively, while still being able to hit him with hit things with like a stab, icicle crash, or max hailstorm is really busted and it's very difficult to deal with in a recent team that i'm working out the kinks of um i'm running burning jealousy alola marowak just because it's able to eat the hit and burn it you shouldn't have to run burning jealousy alola marowak or anything to have to beat it but still it's, it's a pokemon that that demands attention when it hits the field and the fact that it gets attack boost every time it kills something is really annoying i don't think it's completely busted i think we just have to figure out things that beat it a little bit more reliably uh we have to start running more uh and intimidate's more important essentially that's why incinera is so good uh but the fact that it has coverage moves to beat these uh rock types these steel types these fire types that would normally check it is is what's really annoying about it but if you can sell a trick room play bulky enough you're good to go so yeah glacier really gross kartana by far one of my favorite pokemon in the format uh, as you can see, it has really, really bad uh, bulk. Unless you're on the physical side, the bulk's pretty decent. 59 HP, 131 defense, 31 special defense. That's pretty bad. But it's very fast with 109 speed, 181 attack, and that that's really it. Like, 109 speed and 181 attack. Who thought that was okay? Well, it ended up becoming a bit more balanced as time went on, because uh, we now have things like Dragapult that naturally outspeed it. We have Tapu Koko that hits it for a lot of damage. Uh, but this Pokemon, I think, in my opinion, in my opinion, well, right now, like, the items, the usage for the items isn't accurate, but, uh, because no one's running Figgy Berry, <laughs> no one's running Ayapapa Berry, I think, but, uh, this Pokemon, it's gonna be running Assault Vest 90% of the time, and that's just because of how good it functions with an Assault Vest. Uh, I have this team that I built right here. Uh, it's, the Assault Vest spread is 68 HP, 252 defense, or 252 special defense, 188 speed with a Jolly Nature, and you really don't need max speed in this thing. Uh, in my opinion, because you're able to outspeed base 100s, or you could even go base 101 if you just give it one more speed, uh, or one more speed <laughs> uh, point, not EVs, four more EVs technically, uh, and you can just dump the rest in the special defense. You literally don't need attack at all because of how high it is already, and the fact of the matter is, this thing can Dynamax, making it even easier to live hits. I have Dynamax this thing and lived stab flamethrowers uh, with this investment. And it's really close, right? Don't get me wrong, it's really close and it wasn't the strongest flamethrower, but it was a stab flamethrower nonetheless. The fact that you can do that is really, really scary. And also, if you go for a max airstream, 
with Aerial Ace, you get a speed boost in this guy, making him even scarier. And if you pick up a KO, you get plus one attack. His max knuckle, if you go for max sacred sword, will get a KO and also get the it'll get like a beast boost and the max knuckle boost. So it can get plus two attack in a single turn. It can get plus one speed, plus one attack in a single turn. It's a very threatening Pokemon. Yes, it drops to special, uh, yes, it drops to special moves, but it does not, it, like it's it's not like at all that difficult to play around in the format. So I think it's a great Pokemon. I think it's a healthy Pokemon and it's just a Pokemon I can't get enough of right now. I love this thing. It's so fun to use. Uh, and we have, it has plenty of checks, don't get me wrong. Incineroar can beat it if it doesn't get max knuckled, if you're running it bulky enough. Uh, Galarian Moltres walls it pretty hard in my opinion, just because it resists most of the moves it wants to go for, as well as um, being able to hit it on the special defensive side. Galarian Zapdos, it's able to wall most of the moves it wants to go for, except for Max Airstream, uh, and hit it with a Max Knuckle. Tornadus is able to hit on the special side. Dragapult can run Flamethrower just to KO it. It's it's a really good Pokemon, and I, I like it a lot. Uh, and it's also one of the better checks to Glacier, in my opinion, just because of how physically bulky it is when it Dynamaxes. It's able to hit it with, like, Max Steel Spike and just eat up hits. So, yeah, it's a cool Pokemon. I like it a lot. Now, Galarian Moltres. This thing is interesting. This thing is something I, I want to try out. As you can see, the most popular move is Fiery Wrath. And that's because Fiery Wrath is essentially a double targeting rock slide that doesn't miss is dark type and uh, was it and it is a special move so 20% chance to flinch really gross um, it, it's it's a really cool Pokemon it's able to run things like a weakness policy because of its really good special bulk 90 HP 125 special defense 90 defense that's a good Pokemon that that is a lot of good bulk it also hits a decent speed tier at 90 so if you get the weakness policy you can throw off a max airstream and do a lot of damage with it as well as get the speed boost to later on hit things with plus two fiery wrath and the fact that this thing is a good dynamax target means that it's much easier to get into berserk range without taking too much damage past it so if you go below 50 percent health you're able to hit things uh with plus three special attack if you get a weakness policy off this is a really interesting pokemon i'm excited to see where it takes us it works really good with like self-proc weakness policy on like comfe or maybe even like tapu finny setting up a uh a Misty Seed for it. There's a lot of things you can run with it. Raichu is another thing. It's a really cool Pokemon, and I think it, there's a lot going for it in the format, so I'm excited to see where, the, where that Pokemon takes us. I only really want to cover the top 10. How many have I covered? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I have two more to cover. Indeedee Female. Honestly, it's really surprising that this thing has higher usage than Tapu Lele, but I can kind of understand why. Tapu Lele only really works on Hyper Offense, and it's very hard to find a spot for it when you already have a more reliable Fairy and a more reliable uh, Psychic type. Indeedee Female is just like a, a great support Pokemon. Follow me, Expanding Force, Helping Hand Protect. The fact that this thing can throw off an Expanding Force and have no special attack investment and still hit things like a truck, is it, it's so good. And also the fact that this thing is able to run safety goggles to redirect away Spore, Sleep Powder, and all those other really annoying powder moves is really cool. Helping Hand is great for making sure you pick up KOs. I personally run it next to uh, Cinderace at the moment because Helping Handing a max Pyro Ball is doing a lot of damage. On top of that, uh, you're able to follow me and set up Trick Room very reliably with Stack Attack and other Pokemon. So there's a lot of uses this Pokemon has. Uh, and there's a lot of places you could fit it onto a team. So no surprise that this thing's top 10 usage. I'm just surprised that Tapu Lele isn't anywhere near it. Like, look. Where's Tapu Lele? Where's Tapu Lele? There it is. 5% usage. This thing? This thing. 12% usage. More than double. More than double. So that's really gross. Uh, next up is Galarian Zapdos. Galarian Zapdos is a new Pokemon. And I think it's going to fall off in a couple of days, a couple of weeks. I like it a lot. I think it's a great Pokemon, it's very scary, and it's able to run many items like Assault Vest, Focus Sash, Life Orb, Safety Goggles, and do a lot of things very well. As you can see, it has a new move called Thunderous Kick, which is over close combat right now, which I find kind of surprising. Uh, I think more people would run close combat for the immediate power, but I can understand why Thunderous Kick is good for wall breaking. Uh, however, this thing is essentially just better Braviary. It gets a Defiant boost, um, you can't intimidate it because it just makes it stronger, it has Detect, which can't get imprisoned. Brave Bird turns into Max Airstream, doing a lot of damage. It has U-Turn, it has Taunt, it has Stomping Tantrum. The fact that a, that a flying type is Stomping Tantrum is really gross. It has a lot of really cool moves, and even some people are running coaching. Uh, I think it's just a great Pokemon overall, but I don't expect it to stay in top 10. I think Tornadus deserves to surpass it. I think Rillaboom deserves to surpass it. I think Dusclops should go past it. Even Dragapult. I don't know why it's outside of top 10 usage. It's just barely at 10%. Um, but yeah, like I think that this thing should be much higher 
Uh, I think this thing should be much lower on the usage list. Another thing should go much higher than it. Not that it's a bad Pokemon. I just don't expect it to stick around too long. So yeah, uh, those are my those are my thoughts on the top 10 most used Pokemon in the format. I actually kind of want to take a look at some things. Uh, things that aren't used too much. Spectrier, I think, is going to fall to like 1% usage. I just released a moveset guide in Spectrier. Apologies if you didn't want the meme, but honestly, it's not that good. Um, Celesteela, I expect to rise a little bit. Tapu Lele might rise a little bit. Dracovish might rise a little bit. Torkoal should definitely be going up. It's so good. Tyranitar, I expect to drop. Stack Attacka should go up. It's such a good Trick Room setter. Uh, Whimsicott should be going up. Tapu Koko should be going up. Uh, Cresselia might drop a little bit. I, I haven't seen it do much for teams, in my opinion, but it's just a really good Pokemon overall, so I suppose it could still work. So yeah, like there's a lot of things in the format that haven't been ironed out yet. We're still in the first couple of weeks, so we have a lot to learn together. Uh, let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section down below. Do me a favor, leave a like in the video if you enjoyed. If you learned anything, leave a like. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications because I will be bringing you guys some daily VGC content. So yeah, have a nice night and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.